you've got your cameras on and see the names of those of you who haven't so no pressure to have cameras on at all um you know just just be here however you need to be here so it's just lovely to see so many of you um so my name's anna robinson i work for birmingham education partnership so um as i look down the list of people who are here i know some of you work in schools and and are either here you know kind of with a school head on or potentially with a parent head on too um, and we've got some parents here as well but for those people who don't know um birmingham education partnership is a is a school support service across the city and um and we help schools with a whole range of things around around improving outcomes really for children and young people so i've been working with lydia and uh, the team at forward thinking birmingham and along with other colleagues in the city um, on a campaign called you've been missed and that's all about how we welcome children back to school in September but also how we think about how we can look after ourselves through what are I think really some of the most challenging times so um, so Lydia I'm going to hand over to you in a moment but just kind of in terms of housekeeping and if there's anything you want to add in terms of housekeeping Lydia then do so um, Arjun who's our lovely um, administrator for today will mute you all it's not personal um, it just means that we don't get any kind of interruptions we go through and I have a feeling Arjun might have turned people's cameras off um, just to help with probably with bandwidth and things like that for people um, but as and when we ask questions and things and we come back together at the end then you're most welcome to put cameras and things back on so that's no problem. Lydia I'm going to hand over to you to introduce yourself much better than I can do um, and then we'll go to go from there so we've got about an hour together haven't we today or just yeah. under an hour yeah thank you thanks Anna I'm going to bring up my powerpoint just first and then I shall introduce myself um if I can share the screen oh, this is the, fir the first test isn't it <laughs> <laughs> If it doesn't work, Lydia, you'll just have to dance. It's the only way. Yeah, I could do that. <laughs> and, uh, um, yeah, I am having a problem, Arjun. I'm just trying to bring it. Let me see. Oh, I've got it. I've got it. Okay, let's take it back to the... Oh, no. Okay, I'll just take a second. It's stuck. So I shall introduce myself while I do it. Okay. Brilliant. Go back to doing all sorts of funny things i'm going to give it you can you're all right you're there you're in business, you're in business. I think, what can you see i've had to take it off because it's brought up something else um da, 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 da. i might have to ask you to bring it up arjun is that possible because i am having Try again. do you want to um I've got it again. Right, okay. <laughs> it's just very sticky and getting stuck. So just whilst I give my computer a minute to, oh no, there we go. To catch it, because it's not on the right point. Um, I just, yeah, my name's Lydia Stafford. Um, I'm a mental health nurse and I work in Forward Thinking Birmingham. Um, and I have worked in CAMS for the last 18 years this year, which shocks me every time I, I realise that, how long it's been. Um, so currently I work in the STIC team, the early help team that have been very much part of working with yourself, Anna, um, with the UV Mist. Um, and I am a senior practitioner in the team. Um, I've had quite an interest over the years in working with parents and I've got a particular approach that I um, really like um, and have worked with many parents using called non-violent resistance. I'm not going to be talking about that in its broadness today, but I am going to be using elements of it because in terms of um, non-violent resistance, self-care as a parent is um, essential um, in terms of us being um, parents that can have strong relationships with our children and manage challenges and difficulties both at the same time. So I'm still, I think I'm actually there now. <laughs> okay, brilliant. So, um, so what I'm really hoping for today in this time together is to get across why um, self-care is something that's um, 
not a luxury, it's actually essential for us in order to be um, regulated parents that can have these strong relationships with our children and just do the best we can, good enough to manage the challenges as well. Um, so I think the context for this has definitely come through COVID and um, definitely come through identifying potentially many more barriers to self-care for all of us. Um, with many changes in our roles and relationships potentially during this time. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about that to start with in a minute, but I just wanted to say a couple of things about safety before we get started. So I'd really like to encourage people to interact using the chat, to connect with um, me and Anna and to connect with each other. If there's anything you you know you want to share there's some questions that I might pose throughout and if you feel comfortable to answer through the chat please do and just in saying that it's important to say that we can't attend and follow up from what comes through that chat today we won't be able to trace that back to people um, so if there is anything in addition that you need in terms of your own well-being or mental health there's a further link there to the Birmingham Solihull um, in terms of mental health support um, that you can use um, and get if you use that to you know signpost you to, to whatever you might need there um, also just as a further note what i'd like to do today is invite one parent who i've worked with who i know is here um, just into this as well she's not going to put her camera on but there's points that i'm going to ask her some questions because i really think that um, she describes it so much better than I do actually in terms of her self-care journey so I'd like to bring in some of my own experiences as a parent as well as a professional and I'd like to invite um, a lady called Wendy in today so just in terms of that um, there's quite a lot of people here so for Wendy if anybody recognizes her voice um, I just want to just sort of put some boundaries in about confidentiality what's shared Wendy today stays stays in this um, in this, you know, between us who are here today, just so that can feel really safe. So, just to start with, I think I'd just like to reflect on where I'm at a little bit right now. Um, sort of going through the last four months, what's this been like for me? And playing, what I found was I've just seen from one day to the next, my life was transformed into playing many roles at the same time. So all of a sudden, you know, I was um, I was at home, working at home, I had my children at home and I was trying to support them with their education whilst being at work with them all at home. And I'm, sure I'm not the only one. Um, and we've all got different variations of how, you know, how this has changed for us. But for me, it felt like I was just spinning so many plates at the same time. And I did have this image in my mind often that I was like running from plates and had to keep them spinning and often they'd come crashing down, sometimes one at a time, sometimes all at once. And I just felt like I was spreading myself so thinly. It was it just it was a roller coaster. And I'd just like to invite you to just reflect. We've got this space today to do this. So if reflect for yourselves and if you feel comfortable sharing words like I've got here, and please use the chat to do that. But this roller coaster for me was played with self-doubt and self-doubt about as a parent. Um, there was fear, so much fear um, around what was happening. And I felt overwhelmed an awful lot of the time. So right now, today, and Cannerly, we're, we're, some of us are at the end of term, like it's mm. the last day of term for, in my household today. So this end of term itis, as I usually call it, feels a bit different today because None of my children have been full time back at school. They've all been at school in some shape or form. The transition feels very strange at the moment. So I'm just wondering, Anna, for you, like, are there any words for you, either the last four months or today, <laughs> where you're at in yourself? Um, I was thinking as you were talking about, um, you know, when you think that everybody else is doing it way better than you are, so everyone else has got it sorted and you're the only one struggling. I think that's around for lots of people and um and also the kind of um <clears throat> just the just the the kind of being pleased when I've kind of been with I say with other parents you know kind of checked in with other people when other people have said oh my god isn't this hard you know 
that yeah. kind of makes you feel a bit less isolated, I think. Yeah. Um, so isolation, I suppose, and the lack of connection with people is hard as well. Definitely. And that's what hopefully people do share that that might feel a little bit more or less isolating that if it's mm. been hard. I'm not great at attending to the chat and talking, Anna. So if there's anything key that comes up, is that okay? Yeah, fine, no problem. Okay. Um, <coughs> so, so why are we focusing ourselves? Um, and this this can be a real barrier to begin with. You know, it often is for me. Like I, I say, you know, I've not got time for myself. You know, that's the last thing I've got time for. That can be my first response at points to this idea of self care. So I think it's really important in some of the theory that I'm going to talk about today is to get across why that's essential in terms of, of parenting and how that's linked. Um, so we've got, we can start to anticipate, I think, a little bit more about what's ahead with COVID. Um, maybe we don't know exactly when things are going to change or exactly what's going to change and when we've got a bit more to kind of go on and guide us. But we know that we're going to be managing and adjusting to life again gradually which is going to mean we're going to go through lots of transitions for us and for our children back into normality in particular the transition back into school in september that we're all gearing ourselves up for we're anticipating is going to be full time back into school so it's quite a huge change um, so self-care really is integral in terms of strengthening us to get through this time to be resilient to be regulated in ourselves and to have what i term as a non-violent resistance would term as parental presence and this is a really simple idea um, and i'm going to describe it a little bit and show a little video as well like to simplify it but it's um it's borrowed from non-violent resistance but it's going to make sense um, when i tell you what it is um, but what it does is it provides the foundation, as I mentioned before, for managing difficulties as a parent whilst maintaining and strengthening our relationships with our children. And I visualise it always with two hands of this parental presence. We've got the hand of kind of the relationship, the love, the nurture, the acceptance, you know, with our children. And then the other hand that we need just as much and alongside to be able to be firm and provide the structure and the boundaries and the containment so that it's safe and so that these relationships are really really strong so that's what parental presence allows us to do and that's why i'm going to talk about it and how it's linked to self-care so parental presence is quite simply that idea that as we grow up um, and our children grow up Hopefully we had an experience where our parents tell us enough about what's right or wrong or how we should behave that in turn we learn how they would think even when they're not around. So we in turn then learn to kind of hold that idea, the values of our parents even when they're not there and that's what we aim to do with our, our children as well. So this, this helps them to know how to behave when we're not around. It helps to guide them in decision making when they start to become more independent. Um, and when this is lost, and it can be lost for so many reasons, um, it can be lost because it starts, you know, through adolescence, peer influence starts to become very important. So it can compete with parental presence. Understandably, that's normal developmentally. You know, things stress us in life, like illnesses, like trauma, things can really, um, you know, challenge and, and have an impact on parental presence. And this can be really scary for children. So, you know, we've all had different experiences of the last four months, but I think there's a saying, isn't there? Of, um, we're all going through the same storm, but we're all in, our, I'm going to forget what it is now. We've all, we're all in our own boats. It's not the same, but it's the same storm. So, you know, we've, it's been a stressful time um, collectively, it has been. So potentially there's been more risk of impacting an erosion of parental presence during this time. So there's three aspects of it. I just want to break it down a little bit more. Um, there's this idea of physical presence, which is just that I'm here, you know, I'm here with you, um, and I'll be here when you need me. So physically you can see me. So through COVID actually my physical presence has increased 
so that you know that's been one of the maybe the, the strengths during this time that my children can see me all day every day mm. um on there but there's another layer of it that's just as important maybe even more important um and this has really sort of taken a knock for me during this time it's the idea of emotional and psychological presence so this is the idea that i'm here physically but also my children can feel my presence um i can focus on them in the moment um, and i can put other things to one side and that i'm doing what i can do to attend to my own needs and look after myself so i can be regulated with them so this really has probably been the biggest challenge for me over the last few months um i've been here with my children but emotionally i haven't a lot of the time and i say that without blame and shame to myself in this moment because i've I've got through that stage now, but um, you know, I didn't have a choice. I had to do the best I could. I was doing many things at the same time. There's a lot of worry and a lot of fear, which really eroded my psychological, emotional presence. And then this last layer as well is this idea of systemic presence, which is simply, you know, it takes a village to raise a child. Those people in our lives that help us, support us, um, make us feel stronger in ourselves and also help us with our children. Um, you know, this, this is a really important layer of presence as well. So again, this has sort of changed. And I think you were talking about this, Anna, before, mm. you know, in terms of that isolation and not being able to physically connect with people. You know, my children haven't seen people around the house for a long time or, or around us. It's only been recently. Um, and we had to get quite creative in terms of connection. A lot of it's been virtual. So, so yeah, so this has taken a, a knock on effect as well. There's just a very short YouTube clip I'd like to play, um, which is, is just from Finding Dory and it's only a minute and a half, but it just really does get the point across about what parental presence is. So Arjun, I'll bring my screen share off and if you could just share that YouTube clip. I don't think we can hear it, Arjun. Lydia, I think you're muted still. <laughs> I just turned it off because of the interference. Thank you. Um, right, I'm just going to share my screen again. So I'm, I'm hopeful that that kind of got across in quite a playful way. Um, that, you know, that idea that that baby fish, the parents um, had told him to just keep swimming, just keep swimming when he was a baby fish. And then in that moment when his life was at risk, he heard that voice of his parents in his mind and he was, you know, able to act. Um, so, so that's kind of, you know, just trying to um, bring, it, bring parents' presence across um, mm -hmm. that way that you carry your parents in your mind, even when they're not there. I just stuck for a minute, I think. Just goes on to a bit of a delay, doesn't it? I think your slides are feeling the end of term as well. 
Is there anything coming through the chat, Anna, just while I'm stuck? Looks... Um, just, I suppose, thinking about some people thinking about September that might be challenging. Um, you know, the, the challenge between boundaries about work and home. Um, the, the, the hard thing about being mentally present, so you're physically there. You know, you were talking yourself about um, the kind of mental space you've got. So the window you've got to be able to tolerate stuff that's happening. Yeah. Um, and I think also probably a relief that actually lots of people have felt similar things, but we don't say it outwardly. Yeah. <clears throat> um, I'm well and truly stuck. So let's <laughs> again. <sighs> I'm going to ask Arjun if he's got any suggestions for me as technical support. I'm trying to remember. Do you want to send me the slides? Can I bring it up? Okay. Move them for me, Nathan. <laughs> Bear with me. Anna, it's Erin. Can you share oh. with us your top Peerington mishap during COVID? Mine? Oh, gosh. Um, there's been many. There's been many. <laughs> um, <clears throat> um, I think my birthday was, was quite an all-time low um, because it was full. I think it was filled with expectation right, for our daughter on what the day was going to be. And that didn't then happen and so then the kind of you know when the um the ante gets raised um <laughs> so my birthday was not uh, my favorite moment um and it's i think it's interesting as well how quickly you forget how hard it has been at different points or that's been my experience so there's kind of um you know i i can if i really think about it i can think about how hard it was when i was you know kind of early days and just the pressure of trying to get schoolwork done and trying to work and trying to you know be a carer and all of those other things is just the potential for overwhelm is fairly high isn't it absolutely and oh, sorry Arjun yeah. if you got that slide so oh, right. yeah. I wanted to check if you see but please carry on <laughs> So if we just keep going, there we go. Great. We're back in business. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so this is where we're up to. Um, so yeah, so so this links to looking after ourselves, this parental presence, because we cannot achieve presence if we're physically, emotionally, and spiritually depleted. Um, it's really difficult to regulate our emotional responses at those times and to be able to then effectively de-escalate when our children are struggling and they're not able to regulate in their selves. So this is why it's essential in terms of having capacity to be present for those around us. Um, so I'm just gonna keep moving the slide up to the next one, Arjun. I'm gonna just explain now um, why that happens, you know, what happens. I've just got a quote there as well, which I quite like. So uh, what happens you know, to us at points when we become dysregulated in ourselves and we lose our presence. Um, so we can describe this in terms of triggers. Um, and it's being triggered is part of being human. So we're all going to get triggered. 
and we're all much more vulnerable to it when we're depleted or when we're stressed. And that's because we've got this amazing part of our brains, which is a survival brain, and it responds really quickly to threat, um, much more quickly than any other part of our brain. Um, so I'm just going to show you a bit about that now in terms of the brain on the next slide. Um, and I think it's helpful because I think it just really breaks it down to the fact that this is just by nature of being human. So we can kind of, again, try and remove that shame that often can be very paralyzing around this and isolating. But also, this way of thinking about the brain is, um, is, a, is what, how we talk about the brain with children. Um, in the stick team and how I've, I talk about it with my children. So it gives us that shared language to have conversations with our children. It simplifies it. So you can see here on the screen that there's three parts of the brain we've got labelled and we've got the names of the brain, but we've also got them as animals. So down the bottom here, this the stem of the brain here, the amygdala is the survival brain. Um, and we're going to call that the meerkat brain. Um, it's much easier to remember as well than amygdala. So when we think about what a meerkat does, it's on high alert, it's looking for danger um, and it responds very quickly, it's expecting threat. So that's our survival brains, it's there to keep us safe and alive, that's all it's interested in. And at those points within that brain, we can't engage with the rest of it. It's a very strong physical and um, cognitive um, for whole body response and generally we either want to run, we either want to um, fight or sometimes we might freeze. Um, this part, this um, guy here in the middle, the middle brain, the, is, is the emotional memory part, the hippocampus. So we, he's the elephant because the elephant never forgets, so it's much easier to remember as well. So he very much talks to the meerkat and lets him know you know lets him know when there's a threat or when there's danger um so so they talk to each other so so when there's anything that looks like a threat or the danger the elephant will say you need to be in charge the meerkat and that part of the brain takes over and then at the top here we've got this biggest part of our brains which is the prefrontal cortex it's the wise owl uh, it's the wise owl because it's the thinking brain. We can draw all our experiences from here. We can reason things. We can make decisions based on all of the wisdom, you know, that we, that we have and the experience we have. And we can engage that parental presence as well, which is really, really key. Um, I think it's really important to note that that part of your brain does not fully develop for women until about 25 and for males around um, 30, actually. So... So it's just worth remembering that with our children, that not only, you know, you'll know when they're in the meerkat brains, but they've got less of this part of their brains as well, um, developmentally. So, so yeah, so the, the elephant will be much more likely to speak to the meerkat when we're tired and when we're depleted, when we're overwhelmed. So just that kind of link between the two is really key here because it, you know, it's looking after us, it wants us to survive really, and it thinks it's doing the best by us at those times. Um, so, oh, Arjun, I forgot. Yeah, could you move on? <laughs> um, so what I wanted to do is link this survival responses into how this can actually play out with, with, in our relationships and particularly with our children um, in terms of patterns of escalation. So the meerkat might, survive, might respond by um, inviting us in to, to fight. So it might not be physically fight, but we might find ourselves joining the escalation with our child. So our child starts to shout, we start to shout back. So we're both in our meerkat brains and we've got that symmetrical joint escalation. The next survival response on the next slide um, is much more of a, a, a run, want to run. It's a giving in escalation. So the child will make demands, demands, demands. And then eventually um, the meerkat will take over and we'll give in. We'll just want to get out of there. So we'll give in. And we feel like we're walking on eggshells these times. And this is, this is my default as a parent. I, I, I default into giving in. Um, I struggle with this. And, um, you know, it often happens. And then I have to stop and look at what was going on there. And what, you know, what can I build in for myself next time? Um, the last one, I think... On the next slide is a, is a freeze response, you know, the survival response. 
And then I notice this in myself as a parent when I just cannot think. My th I cannot think, I cannot get hold of my thoughts. Um, so it can, it's a level of disconnection that can happen at times and disassociation with this as well. You can feel quite numb and like not, not present at all um, in the situation. So if just keep on the next slide. So now we've just talked about that, um, we just, I think it'd be really helpful to think about what is self-care, because when we first mention this often, um, I can be met with, you know, I don't have time, I do not have time to go and get my nails done or to, you know, have a nice bubble bath, I don't have the time and I, and I totally get it, you know, like that's often where I come from as well. But it's much, it's breaking it down to something that's much, much simpler than that. And it's much smaller steps. And it, and it can just simply be having an intention, actually having an intention to look after yourself can make a huge difference. So just going to look at that now um, in terms of what it is. There's just a couple of definitions there. Um, so there's one from the Oxford Dictionary. Um, but also I've just made it more simple. And when I say simple, I've said to put it simply or not simply because it just for me self-care is a journey and it needs constant nurture and it's still the hardest thing for me to prioritize so it's not simple but it's knowing what you need when you need it and getting what you need and each level of that in itself can be as much of a challenge um so it's not straightforward um so if yeah, so, and I mentioned in terms of these barriers during um, COVID and what those might be, and you've, you've told uh, um, something about your own experience, Anna, um, but I think it might be key to reflect on some of this for ourselves. Now, what have these additional barriers been? Um, and then what things have we managed to keep going with? Um, like I've, there's just been so many things for me. I think I've recognised that just missing traveling round between appointments like what an act of self-care that was for me because I used to purposefully when I was driving have a bit of headspace to process things um, and also I would always pick like maybe my favorite music to play or an audio book and it's just things like that that really replenished me and kind of like just made me feel present for my next appointment during work so so it's just, you know, the same thing is there anything for you, Anna? Um, I would agree with the, <clears throat> the travel because that helps with the kind of, I didn't realise how I used that time to process stuff. And then, um, you know, because I've been working throughout just the kind of going from one thing to another, to another, to another, and you can feel by the end of the day, the, the build up of the, kind of your meerkat really can't you yeah. um and I noticed somebody just put about not being able to go out and do exercise so um so in our family for example the loss of things like being able to swim or go to the gym and have just have access to all the resources that help keep you steady um has been a real loss I think yeah. I know somebody's just wrote right, not being able to go to work and get mm. away yeah that respite and stuff yeah and I've, I've got to say that there's been many yeah. as hard as it's been that I've been so thankful to still be able to work and have that work identity but I know for a lot of people that that will have been a loss as well um a time away yeah absolutely yeah. if we could just carry on Arjun and to the next slide um, so just thinking what happens and we've touched on this already and we've thought about what happens in the brain um, when we're depleted but like I love this quote you can't pour from an empty cup so this is not selfish it's an absolute necessity that we that we do this for ourselves you go in onto the next slide <laughs> and I always think this has got to be the starting point giving ourselves permission um to, to to do this to do acts of self-care to to work out what we need um and you know for some like for me giving myself permission i'll put a little permission slip up there but actually writing it down to myself on a post-it note 
and literally sticking it on my wall just having that visual reminder i find very powerful so whether it's that mentally giving yourself permission or it's actually having a visual reminder um, that you need to do that you know that's something that works for me and i'd really encourage people today to kind of maybe just take five minutes at the end of today just to go away and to write themselves one or two permissions um, in terms of taking forward in their next steps just move on thank you so we can think about how do we look after ourselves because it's not straightforward so this idea of self-compassion is so key you know relating to oneself with kindness it's not easy and there's a Christian net um, reference on there a TED talk that she does all about self-compassion but I'm sure I'm not the only one that has this running negative voice that steps up you know when I'm when I'm more overwhelmed or when I'm I'm not you know doing as much as looking after myself um, and it's the very opposite of self-compassion and it's something that I have to constantly attend to and challenge in myself um, I keep going and these small acts, breaking it down into the smallest steps that we can do mindfully. Um, so we've just got our full attention on what we're doing at that time in terms of being present. And I always like to share this story of a parent that I worked with um, doing nonviolent resistance. But when we were looking at self-care in nonviolent resistance, um, she just stayed in my mind. She had six children, a single parent. Um, all with significant needs and she's been through a lot of trauma, domestic violence and when we talked about self-care that first time it was a very emotional experience for her because she hadn't, she couldn't remember the things that she liked for herself that would, would, she, that would give her energy, she could not get in touch with that at all and just that in itself was actually really emotional um, for her and a huge sense of loss of not being able to do that for a long time and we got to this point where she remembered that she used to like to drink coffee, really nice coffee in coffee shops. And we got to the end of the session where she could commit to going away and finding a way to have an instant cup of coffee each day just for her. Um, and that was like moving a mountain for her, actually. It was not a simple thing. And she came back the next session and she was like a completely different woman, <laughs> like really, really was. And she said to me, just doing that for herself just opened up this space where she kept seeing opportunities to do more things for herself. So she got out her nice percolator, she bought some nicer coffee, <laughs> find herself buying nice foods when she's at the supermarket rather than just focusing on what she was buying for the children. So yeah, it's just it, just the smallest things can actually have quite a quite a, a big impact. I'll keep going. What I'd really like to do is to give you something that you can take away today, um, something practical that you can do for yourselves or for you, with, with your children, with regard to your children. Um, and it's definitely linked to self-care. So this, uh, this idea of prioritising things and baskets is looking at when we've got too much going on at one time, it becomes overwhelming and we can't focus on everything at once so it's a way that you can prioritize things either for yourself with what you you know your own to-do list or with maybe there's many many challenges you face with, with with your children so the way that you go about this is simply getting lots of pieces of paper separate pieces of paper and writing each challenge down on a separate piece of paper and make it really specific or each thing to do if it's your to-do list on a separate piece of paper and then what we want you to do is to prioritize it in terms of three different baskets so you don't need physical baskets like I um, actually the very nice parent that's here today bought me my own basket <laughs> but um, you don't need that you do not need that you, you could do it mentally you could have bits of paper or different size envelopes so if we just move on to the next slide, Arjun, and I'll explain a bit more. Um, so it's really important to do this because, as I said, dealing with everything, we cannot do it. It's really depleting. We're much more likely to end up in our survival brains and that meerkat will take charge. So it's about picking our battles and it's about freeing up our energy so that we can focus on our children, so we can focus on ourselves as well and our own self-care. So these three different piles are explained on the next slide with the three baskets. So in the biggest pile, 
um, the big basket, if you just move on a slide, thank you, is the, all of the things that you're going to let go of for now. So this should be the biggest number. You don't need to let go of them forever, but just for now. Um, and then in the middle place is maybe a place where you're going to, you know, negotiate on things with your child or you're going to offer a prompt with if it's something with your child or you, you, you're not going to attend to um, right now if it's on your own to-do list, so it's in, in the middle place. And then that small basket should only have one or two things in that you're focusing on at any one time. And if this is behaviours with your child, these are the one or two things that you can no longer accept and you're going to keep persisting with and keep mm -hmm. going back to with them. But when you do this, you would only do this as much as possible when you're both in your wise owl brain, so you're not getting into those escalations. So you're freeing your energy up for one or two things. Um, and by doing this, baskets, as I said, not only if you do it with your child, it can help with self-care because it can be free up your energy, but also you could do it with your own to-do list so that you free up your energy as well and you're only focusing on one or two things. This is how I actually do manage my to-do list at work. Um, and have, always have a fourth basket, always have a place where you write down all the things that you love and appreciate about your child or about yourself, if you're doing it for yourself. And this is a positive bag and keep adding to this and adding to this as well to really connect you with that. Because that will also give you energy, that will also um, be very much, um, help you feel more and more present. Um, so if you could keep going, Arjun. So we've got about 15 minutes left um, and what I like this quote, so I've, I've popped it up there, but um, what I'd really like to do is invite Wendy um, to talk with me. So I think she'll have to unmute herself or Arjun will. And I'd really like to ask Wendy a few questions about her journey with self-care. Um, and yeah, so is that okay, Wendy, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Thank you, hi. You're right. Yeah, good. Good. So I was just thinking, Wendy, that you know we met a while ago. Now I'm, I'm thinking it might have been. Actually, I'm not going to get that right, so I'm not going to have to guess. It was last year sometime. I don't know either. So. Um, and I just wondered if you could say a little bit for people that you're happy to share about how we met and what prompted you on your journey, because it was MBR, the journey that we went on together, and brought you to an importance, I guess, about self care and presence through that journey. What 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 prompted you on that journey? I think things needed to change in mine and the children's lives. Um, we'd had a big change in, you know, living arrangements and things like that, and things weren't great for anybody. And I think it was almost a hit the rock bottom kind of thing. Um, and the idea of initially the idea of, of self care was absolutely meaningless to me. I think I'd spent so long being a mom, you know, and working and things like that, that actually me as a person didn't actually exist anymore. And so to start with, it was just bringing me back, if that makes sense to people. Um, and with a, with a hope and a view to build in better relationships with, with all the people that I spend time with, but specifically my children. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm just, I suppose I'm wondering, you know, because we've been talking about the last few months here, like what things have been like for you over the last few months in terms of your own context during COVID? I think, I think I've said to a few people, it's like the whole boat in the storm, isn't it? That, that everybody's climbing their own version of the mountain, really. But it's, and it's been very difficult for other people somebody had put in the chat you know sending their children as key workers to school you know was a, a huge thing but for me the huge thing was that we've been shielding there's just me as a grown-up in the house and that I do quite a social job and not having like you say that drive to work get, being able to escape from the house and, and from people has been a big challenge and being told you know don't go out it's it's really dangerous out there for you know guidance to flip almost into yeah, yeah it's okay you you can go out and managing my own anxiety and the children's anxiety around all of that but on my own 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 if you know what I mean like I think I didn't realize that 
you know, going to work and the people that you talk to, even the lady in Sainsbury's, you know, it, it's, it's all grown ups to speak to and you don't know what you're missing till that's gone, you know. Yeah. And just now, like, cause I know I do remember what a journey I felt like you went on with self care, um, going back to the beginning again. And I remember a point where you said to me, you really didn't know what it actually meant at all. You'd realise you didn't know what it meant at all. I'm just wondering, what was the starting point for you, Wendy, where self-care started to make sense to you, rather than my version of it, you know, it started to make sense to you? I, I totally agree with that, Lydia. I, I thought self-care meant selfish. Um, I kind of thought I didn't deserve, you know, time for me, you know, as a person. And I think it started, for me, it started really small, but it's something that's completely stayed there. I didn't used to bother with breakfast, you know, didn't always take a decent lunch to work and things. So it literally started with while the kids were upstairs getting dressed in the mornings, I'd come down and just have that literally 10 minutes eating a bowl of cereal. Um, and actually that is still so important to me um, to do that on my own as well. You know, I, I don't, I don't want to eat my cereal with anybody. Um, and just, you know, going to the supermarket on the way to work and choosing something that I wanted to eat for that day that wasn't, you know, thinking about what the kids would want and just having, I suppose, like the car journey thing, having that 10 minutes walking around the supermarket, there's nobody in there at half seven in the morning. Um, just felt like there was some space and, and that was a start then to kind of filling my own cup back up um that I think you've got that you've got more resources within you then to um to sort of cope with yeah. the day-to-day -day life and I just yeah what do you what do you remember or what do you notice now I suppose in yourself not just during those acts of self-care like your breakfast or you know choosing things just for you like how does what kind of impact does it have on you outside of those times for yourself do you notice that? I'm just thinking about that. You know. I think it's a allowed me to know that I'm still a person uh, and not just my job role and not just, you know, mum and things like that. And I think it's given me the strength to, to be who I want to be and to say no to things. I was very much a yes person. I'd agree to do everything to help everybody, even if it meant you know, to my detriment or to the children's detriment. And so um, I think I can sort of stop and take stock of things a little bit more and think, actually, is this good and right for, for what we need um, or not? And saying no the first time to somebody was probably the most scariest thing ever. But being able to do that um, and to put all of our needs first was just mega, really. Do you know, something's just struck me for the first time that I've never thought about before, actually, just listening to you. I'm thinking about those two hands of presence and how much we need them with ourselves as a starting point to be able to do that with other people. And I'm just noticing that you doing self-care, so this softer, you know, this nurturing side enabled you to put the boundaries in for yourself, this firmer side. So I just, I hadn't thought of it before about how important that is until you spoke in that way it just really struck me um, so with boundaries I didn't have boundaries with people um, I let people take too much um, and so not doing that now means that actually what I do give is probably much better quality giving I was going to ask you I was going to say to you what have you noticed in your relationships particularly your relationships with your children or what do you and also what do you think that your children may have noticed in you i think they just notice a calmer calmer mom um they also have started to realize that i am a person too um and that i've got my own wants and needs and you know dreams and hopes and things that i want to do that might not involve them um it's like when you're younger you've got your hopes and dreams and i've achieved a fair few of those but it's about sort of carrying onwards and upwards and not just being that mom, but relationships with my children. I think for me, COVID has, it's brought such a nightmare in so many ways, but 
it's allowed me to sort of embed a bit more my MVR skills because a lot of us probably have never spent this much time with our children since they were newborns maybe. Mm -hmm. And so although it's brought phenomenal challenges, um, it's given me that chance to build those relationships, you know, spend a bit of time showing them how to cook pancakes and things. Stuff that just before we'd have been at activity clubs, we'd have been whizzing around, you know, from work to after school and things like that. I've tried to look at it being, you know, being locked in for four months with your own children and just you has been such a challenge. I think if I'd have let it run away with the, you know, I'm stuck and things, I've tried to look at it from a positive point of view in that someone handed me a great opportunity to, to work on relationships, to work on, you know, self-care. And I've kind of tried to take that from it, else I think it might have done my head. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And um, I suppose I'm just thinking, I know you've got daughters and I'm wondering what, what it's been, again, what it's been like for them to see you looking after yourself in terms of being a role, a role, role model to the future women. Um, what, what do you hope that kind of, that, in, that how, how do you hope that's landed with, with your daughters? I think that they've started to take on, I think because I was probably a bad example with self-care, so they'd only ever seen me not doing self-care. So it's been a shift for them in that they can see me doing things for myself. So it's almost like I've given them the permission in their heads to do things for for themselves and, and for them to say no as well. So I think that's been huge because I grew up you know, it took me till my 40s to realise that hopefully the, you know, the girls are much younger um, and starting on their self-care journey earlier. So hopefully they won't have the barriers that I had um, necessarily. So I think it's been really positive for them in that sense. Thank you. I'm going to just ask you one more question. Um, so if there was anything now that you could tell your self at the beginning of this journey or I don't know obviously we don't know where different parents are at in their self-care journeys and for me as I said it is a constant journey <laughs> and it's a backwards and forwards but if you if there was some key piece of advice you could tell yourself at that first point or or say to parents what would it be? I think you know looking at the slide that's on the, the be kind to yourself I think there's such a lot isn't there in the news and on social media be kind um and different people matter i think be kind to you because you matter you're still a person underneath all those other jobs and hats that you wear um if you if you can be kind to yourself and recognize that you matter other people will treat you better in that way um and it's easier then to put boundaries in but i think the whole thought of self-care is absolutely overwhelming if you're at that very beginning like I was and it is all you're sort of asking of yourself is that five or ten minutes mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be huge but I think for, for me mine's grown from those few minutes in the supermarket those few minutes eating breakfast to I now do proper amounts of exercise regularly I was lucky to have an exercise bike because we couldn't go out um, and I've taken up a new hobby that's something that I've always wanted to do and just never found the time so for me that's you know evolved from five ten minutes every day to you know sort of protected sessions where you know what I actually don't care what's going on beyond me and my exercise bike three times a week you know um, it's almost like Put those little bits of time for me I need that like order I need to know that Monday Wednesday Friday I, I do this you know putting it protecting those times because then when it does all go a bit wrong like Covid you've still got something to to hold on to and I think that's really important that's been really important for me. Thank you I'm really excited to hear about how far you yeah with that. <laughs> we're running out of time though. <laughs> Yeah, we could talk for a lot longer. Thank you. Um, so just to kind of conclude a little bit as well on the next slide. Um, move, can we move a longer slide, I think? So again, it's just another parent who really just, yeah, really inspired me this week. She just joined our 
a non-violent resistant group and done the week about self-care so she's at the beginning of her journey and this was a quote that she shared um, with us um, after that group and she was happy to share so just you know how, the, how overwhelmed and upset she felt just thinking about doing something for herself but despite this she left the session and dived straight in and before she collected her boys from school she went to Costa and she got herself a magazine and she sat in the car for 30 minutes and she said it was amazing and it really did give me the energy to deal with any issues and she's so much going on and so much challenge um, that she's managing in particular with her one son so I thought just that was really really important to share as well um, and just on the last slide um, there's some references and I just wanted to yeah share those with you so there's a, a book there that's a bit of an overview of MDR which is only like pocket handbag size let's say if people want to know a bit more about it as a whole approach um, there's a little YouTube video there which is called shark music which we think again about this meerkat brain that in triggers and that as well as self-care there are all sorts of things that we're all carrying around that will trigger off shark music and trigger off our meerkat so it's definitely worth a little watch it's very thought-provoking and Kristen Neff who I've mentioned talks about self-compassion um, and it's very interesting there's a TED talk that I would highly recommend um, we are up to time we have bang on time because we did have some technical issues so Anna, I'm just wondering, um, in terms of endings, we have got a poll, but if there's just anything else we need to say? Uh, yes, I was just going to say, well, probably on behalf of everybody, a big thanks to Wendy, because I think, you know, Wendy, you've articulated so much for lots of different people who are with us today. Um, so just a huge thank you. And um, I really, you know, I wish you every success kind of growing your self-care and on the rest of your journey it sounds like you've done some really brilliant um brilliant work so really well done um and thank you to you Lydia for um for being with us today and for um sharing some of your wisdom with us all and I, I hope that um people feel that kind of although we're not physically all present we are able to be kind of present together and sharing some of our experiences helps us normalize some of what's been happening um, for each of us. I've just put into the chat, but I know everybody is kind of um, writing in there at the moment. There's a link there into the Birmingham Women's and Children's website. So as part of the kind of you've been missed world that we work in, um, there will be over the next few weeks and months more and more resources for parents um, going into there. So ways that you can support children to manage anxious feelings ways that you can look after yourself lots and lots of different things and links to different things so so do keep an eye on that website and also um i think we've got a kind of social media campaign but i'm the last person to ask about social media um but do keep your eyes out for things like that and also for more of these kinds of um webinars for parents as well because i think it's quite important we just um normalize things for people at the moment that you know it's been it's been a really hard time and it will continue to be as well for many of us too. Um, so Arjun, if we've got the poll, if you're able to pop that up, that would be great. Um, but Lydia, is there anything you want to say just to kind of finish and let people leave well? Um, I don't, I think I'm quite strict now being able to have a chance to look at the chat because it's really yeah. hard to both. But there's a lot of connection amongst parents, um, you know, just validating it. And what, what a difference that can make, just remembering that systemic presence, like what a difference yeah. it can make just to share this stuff, feel listened and heard by each other and how it, you know, there hasn't been the space for that, has there? We've all been kind of, well, hamster wheel, I felt like, yeah. just sitting around on my own. So, yeah. Yeah. you know, I, I'm feeling actually very validated as a parent just with some of these comments. So thank you. Yes, yes. So, oh, OK, so no poll this time. Um, so uh, thanks Arjun for, for letting me know that. Um, so any other comments and things, please do just pop them in the chat. Um, but otherwise that's, that's the end of our session for today. So go well, everybody. Um, try and think about some of the things that you might be able to do to look after yourselves. Um, remember you are all really important people um, and you can't give from an empty vessel. So, um, so look after yourselves, everybody, and go gently 
and um, and look out for for more bits and pieces to come. <laughs>